Now, I'm sure you're using LLMs in your daily life. You're getting outputs that maybe are okay. Maybe you're using them, but a lot of people are saying that the, uh, the hype is over. AI is not really giving us any information that we can do with, and AI actually is uh, making it worse for us. In the marketing world, a lot of people want to use this for things like voice of customer and getting information, and they're just not getting the information that they want. Hang with me here, and I'm going to take you through this, and by the end of this video, you'll be able to ground your own information 10 at a time, get everything that you need from these LLMs, okay? My name is Sean David. I'm here from automate to win and I am going to take the next five to seven minutes or so and talk to you about grounding your LLMs. Good evening, wherever you're joining me from, thanks. This is your weekly CXL feed. Now, step zero is the definitions of what we're talking about. There's three words that I really need you to understand in the way that I, I talk about them so that way you can get on the same page. The first one is the model. Now, the model is the M in LLM. This is the thing that is the code that is in charge of all of the actual information processing inside of these tools. So Gemini is its own model. Claude is its own model. GPT is its own model. Llama is its own model. There's all kinds of different models out there. They all do the same thing. It's the actual information technology that moves the data through and gives us a statistical analysis of your prompt and gives you an output. Maybe that output is an image or text or video or whatever it is. This is the model. And then un underneath that, what actually gives the model anything that it can move on is the training data. So this is trillions or quadrillions of data points, which are basic if-then statements that allow the model to know how to move based upon inputs. So you say something and it knows within a statistical relevance what it should respond back to you. So it's a mirror based upon a billion, and trillion, quadrillion different data points of this is what I see, this is what I expect. And then you have grounding, which is what you're here to talk about today, was what we're going to talk about, which is using your specific data, which is not already in the training data, giving it a layer of specificity and a, and a layer of subject matter expertise that can only come from adding your own specific data. So what does grounding actually accomplish? many things. One of the most important is it gives it context that it wouldn't have because you, it wouldn't have trained this data without you. So if you have specific information about your clients, if you have specific information about your product that was not readily available from the last seven to 10 years on the internet, it's not going to be in the contextual database. And even if it was, specifics of asking actual specific questions tends to give a little bit less of a great result in such a large data set. So what we do is we can give it more context so that it has things that it didn't have or has the ability to grab specificity where it didn't before. And this is what I mean when I say it actually specifies your answers. Because if you're asking it a vague question with context, it will give you a specific answer. If you ask it a vague question without context, it'll give you a vague answer. So for instance, if you ask it to bake you a cake, it's going to give you a cake because it knows what cake is, but it's not going to give you a chocolate frosted gluten-free strawberry cake. Not going to happen. If you give it grounded context that says the ingredients that I have are this and my preferences are that, when you ask it, give me a cake, it specifically will give you a chocolate flavored gluten-free strawberry frosted cake, okay? This is the power of allowing it to ground itself because it's tethered, it's grounded, it can't fly away. If this is the definition of like airplanes versus like children, right? You're not in trouble, you just are like tethered to the ground and you can't float. This also allows for voice of customer. This allows you to move forward and it allows you to use actual data and the patterns in the ways people speak, which are going to be specific to your company and your product just the way it is. Even if your competitors are going to have different reviews, they're going to interact with your competitor different. So your voice of customer, most important thing to use. It reduces hallucination. Now, hallucination is something that we're going to talk about in a, in a future episode. But just to understand, it is a non-tethered where it just makes sense. And a statistical analysis of the word says this makes sense. But in reality, it's not true. So mathematically, it makes sense. But in reality, it doesn't. This is the dangerousness of using these things without grounding information. 
And it also, it just improves output. Like it just makes it so that way you can use this stuff. So if you're having a problem right now with actually using discernible information from the LLM, grounding will fix that. How do you actually do it? It's easy. There's a button, click it. Here's Claude. Gemini, same thing. Now, Gemini, you do have to have the professional one. Like you got to pay the $20, DPT. And here's Perfectum. They're all the same. Click a button, add a CSV, add a PDF, whatever it is. So this is the traditional way that things are prompting. Give it a prompt. LLM has context. It gives you an output. It's a linear thing. It just goes along the line. No issues. What is two plus two? LLM knows math. Output is four. Write me a story. Tell me a joke. All these things, right? Alexa stuff, like easy stuff. Traditional prompting. This is from, you know, two years ago until now. This is generally how people do it. If you're not familiar with grounding, this is probably how you do it as well. No matter the prompt you have, no matter how great your prompt engineering is, it's still a singular prompt or multiple prompts. LLM context is huge. Output is there, right? Type of thing that you get here. Now, you're a CXL person, you understand marketing, you're probably using prompting better than just help me with my negative reviews. Uh, so this is what I would assume anyone watching this video would be at. I have several hundred negative reviews of my product on my website. They talk about the lack of quality, shipping time, and overall price. How can I fix this, right? Specific question to a non-specific answer because it doesn't know what reviews you have. It doesn't know what product you have. It doesn't know any of this. It just knows you have a product and a website and what you consider negative reviews and that they have a specific quality shipping time and price. That's not enough information for it to actually give you anything. If you look at this, it just identifies specific complaints. Yeah. Enhanced quality control. Okay. Redesign or source alternatives. Great. None of this is information that you couldn't have already gotten or already don't know from reading the CXL blog or getting CXL certified. It's just the way it is. Now, when you add ground into this, though, everything changes because you I now remember you're giving it the instructions and the ingredients on how to make a specific cake and asking it for a cake. So you can ask it for the cake and you can get what you need. This may look confusing. It isn't. It just turns it from a linear process into a flywheel process. So your prompts and your data are now the same. So your prompts are included in your data. Now, again, you went through and you uploaded it. So every prompt that you have is going to reference that data. So as it goes forward, it's going to spin forward. And it's going to look at the context it has and it looks at the context you sent it. From there, your output is also going to be a flywheel. And now there's three different ways that I really like to alter the content. And that's going to be voice, content, and structure. So voice is going to be specifically if you are trying to make something, like say in my voice, and I, I downloaded a bunch of stuff and I added grounding for me, writing samples and stuff, I can say this is yes to me or no to me. This is more like me or less like me. This is close to the way I speak or not. Then you have the quality of the content, which is, okay, this is how I speak, but this isn't the quality of which that I would output. So you've written bad things in my voice, right? And then you have the structure, meaning I wouldn't use headlines like that. I wouldn't use paragraphs or idiosyncrasies like this, like whatever, the structure. You can iterate on this because again, you're telling it what the ingredients are. You're telling it how to bake the cake. If the cake comes out and it's not the right cake, you can change that because you grounded that information. So what does that look like in practice? Let's take the same exact thing and say I have reviews on my website. Well, let's actually add the reviews. And you say, attach the reviews of my product. Right? Using the data, specifically identify the themes and patterns that will help me improve my product, my customer service, or both. So you're saying, here is my data. What are they saying? How are they saying it? I want to improve either my customer service or my product or maybe both. I don't know. What do I need to do? What, what's going on here? What you can say, specifically only reference the data I have presented to you. Specifically only reference this data. Use this as reference and then go and get context from everything else that you know. Return to me specific examples of what I can do. Return to me specific examples. So you're giving it more specific instructions with specific content to get a specific answer. Does anything seem familiar? Specificity. The more specific you ask, the better it is with the more context you've given it. The more you can tell it what it is and how to react and respond, the better your outputs are going to be. So when you see this, you can see the output that you get. This is now actionable information. Charges and billing transparency, right? Many users reported unexpected charges or difficulty with cancellation, your refund policy revision, things that you need to do. These are actual things. Use automated email triggers within your CRS system for billing notifications. 
Why? Because you want to send a reminder email seven days before subscription renewals and include clear instructions on cancellation. This is actionable. You can test this. You can go in your CRM and your WordPress and all this stuff. You can do this right now. Include a factor guide on, on managing subscription. You can do this right now. You can take away from this and you can say, these are the ideas I want to do. That doesn't mean you have to. But this is an order of magnitude better than this product quality improvement in identify specific complaints. You have the specific complaints and they're telling you what to do with them. So now the LLM knows your data and you can query your data, but it also knows everything that isn't your data. So you have the best of both worlds. You have the specificity that you need to get the actions that you need from the data you've provided, but you also have the context of everything else that's ever been written in the human language in the last 200 years. So you can go and identify patterns and actual movements based upon your data. If you don't ground, if you don't add the data that you can actually add the specificity, you see the outputs that you get. You're there every day. You're good at what you do. You're doing everything that you can to market, but the outputs just aren't there. Use grounding data. Get the data in there. And then you can make sure that all the flywheels that are spinning, you can start changing. You can actually start modifying and measuring and getting outputs that you can move on. And now you have a system you can measure. Now, what happens when you start hallucinating? What happens when we aren't doing large scale things? What happens when my data set is huge? How do I make sure that I can keep data sets among data sets? Well, that's why we're going to be here for multiple weeks. Make sure you check in next week and the week after and we're going to handle that. Hopefully this was helpful for you. Check me out on LinkedIn. I'm around. Have a great day.